So, if you remember last month's video, I showed three boxes that had come in on the first day of the month, and you'd have to wait until March's video to see what they were. Well, here we go. Uh, this first package is from Hayes Anderson. It's covered in duct tape, <laughs> and if LGR's pet peeve is packing peanuts, then I'd have to say my pet peeve is covering a package in duct tape like Fort Knox. The real issue is, like in this case, I, I can't actually figure out where to cut. <laughs> Nevertheless, I did eventually get it open. Aha! So, um, what this is, is one of those 2XL robots that use 8-track tapes. I've seen these featured on several YouTube channels before. I think these came out in the 1970s. Uh, looks like it also came with a few tapes as well. Uh, the thing is, I'm told this one doesn't work, so I'm going to attempt to repair it in a future episode. Uh, very cool, this should be interesting. Uh, thank you, Hayes. The next package, and this was also received on the first of the month, is from Evan Clannon. And here's a note. Looks like something to do with an EEPROM. Ah, uh, so what we have here is not just an EEPROM, but an actual EEPROM programmer as well. Well, uh, this will be nice if I can get it to work. I actually bought a cheap EEPROM programmer on eBay years ago, but never could really get it to work. Uh, this one looks a lot nicer. Hopefully I'll have better luck. Thank you, Evan. And this is the last of those three packages I got in on the first of the month. And this is from Steven Pazikowski. <laughs> um, and we have a little note here. Apparently this is an odd piece of hardware. Interesting, Hawes Automatic Weather Station. Ah, for the VIC-20 or Commodore 64 computers. Unfortunately, it looks like this floppy disk has seen better days. It looks like some kind of oil or something was spilled on it. It seems to have permeated through the entire disk. Here's the label. Anyway, uh, this is the actual weather station. And it looks like it plugs into the user port on the VIC-20 or 64. Uh, this is really cool. If anyone has a copy of the software, let me know, as I can't find it online. And a big thanks to Steve. Next up, we have a package from Scott Rubin. It appears to be a bunch of original game discs for the Commodore 64. There's quite a few here. I'm familiar with some of these. Ah, but this is the most interesting, a word processor for the Commodore 128 in 80 column mode. Okay, well, thank you, Scott. Here we have another little box. Uh, this one is from Ed Hurtley. Uh, these appear to be in television games. Ah, but this one is the most interesting because it actually supports the voice synthesis cartridge, which not many games did. So, yeah, I'll be interested to try this out. Uh, thank you, Ed. Next, we have a little package here from Allmax. Ah, looks like a magazine. And here's a note. Ah, yes, this is from Michael. I remember this conversation, so this is the first ever issue of a magazine devoted just to the IBM PC Junior. Uh, this should help with the upcoming documentary I'm working on for the PC Junior. It looks like this came out in 1984. When I first opened it, I saw this little advertisement for AST. I used to work for AST back in the 90s, so that's cool. And uh, here's an ad for the old Amdeck monitors. Uh, I used to have one of these back in the 80s, and it was the sharpest CRT I ever had during that time. Uh, cool. Thank you, Michael. Okay, here's the next one. This is from Sean Ravenwolf. That is a cool last name. But I should mention that my last name is not Murphy, although I've certainly been called that hundreds of times in my life, so this isn't the first. Well, uh, the instructions say to open here, so I guess I'll open it there. Okay, this is really odd. It appears to be wrapped in those air pocket things, but there's not actually any air in them, so <laughs> that's really bizarre. Despite that, it appears to have arrived intact. So uh, this is a Casio PT-180, which is one I've wanted for a while. I do remember the conversation with Sean, though, and I understand this one doesn't work, so I may need to do some repairs on it. And what do we have here? Okay, this is a ROM pack, and that goes right in there. All right, well, I look forward to getting this working. Uh, thank you, Sean. Here's a little package from Andrew Kebby, and if that name sounds familiar, it's because he donated an Atari Lynx to me a few months ago. And here's a note. Looks like he's sending me another Lynx game. Here it is, Batman Returns. Okay, thank you, Andrew. 
Next we have another little Fort Knox style box. I'm not actually sure who this is from. Interesting, it's been x-rayed according to the post office. <laughs> the 8-bit guy. Yeah, okay, these are a bunch of cassette games for the Sinclair Spectrum. I may be able to use these on my Timex model eventually after some mods. Anyway, I think I remember this conversation, but I wasn't able to find the email about them, so uh, thanks goes out to whomever sent these. Next is a box from Stuart Chiplin at Koch Media. Again, <laughs> there's instructions to open this end. I love the 8-bit font. And inside is, uh, you may have already guessed, a C64 Mini. No need to go into any great detail on this, as I actually just released the review video on this nifty device a few days ago. So, big thanks to Stuart for sending me this. Alright, uh, next we have not one, but two boxes from Ted Monk. Well, I'll start with this one. Interesting, uh, here's a note that looks like it was done on a real typewriter. <laughs> okay, uh, so he sent me some Tandy disk drives. Of course, these aren't just any old disk drives, these are the portable drives for the Tandy portable line of computers like the Model 100 and 200. Hmm, I can't seem to get the travel protector out. Well, I don't want to break it, so I'll just leave it in there for now. Uh, looks like he sent me some software too. And he sent the cables. These are actually harder to find than the disk drives themselves. And uh, there's one more little thing in here, a Compumate Basic cartridge. Neat, uh, we'll come back to this in a minute. So the other box contains apparently another disk drive, but this one's in the original box. Cool, I, I don't think I've ever seen the original box for one of these before. And inside is another disk drive. And let's see if the protector will eject. Okay, good, this one comes out. Well, hopefully I can get one of these working. So um, I dug out my old laser Compumate because I wanted to try out that basic cartridge. I only have two units that didn't include basic and ROM and I wasn't even aware they could run basic. So uh, this will be interesting to try out. I did a whole video on these before so if you haven't seen that go check it out. Um, looks like the cartridge goes in here. I figured I wouldn't likely be showing these again anytime soon so now would be the best time to try this cartridge out. Okay so uh, let's fire this thing up. Well this is the usual list of programs it has built in. Uh, but looky there, it has BASIC in the menu now. Let's try it. Well, there we go. I'm not going to code anything right now, but the cartridge clearly works. I thought I'd also try it on this CompuMate 1. It has far less RAM and a smaller screen, so I'd be surprised if it works on this too. However, it looks like the cartridge will in fact fit. Yep, like a glove. Well, uh, let's fire this one up. It only shows to have three options, just like before. But if I scroll through, sure enough, there's BASIC, and uh, trying it out, it does appear to work here as well. Uh, very cool. I had no idea this machine could run BASIC. Neat. Uh, well, thank you, Ted. Up next, I have a mysterious box from Japan. This appears to be a company name. I don't recall ordering anything from Japan lately. Uh, the custom section just says GAME. <laughs> Not very descriptive. Well, let's open it up and see what this game is. Oh, look at that. Uh, somebody sent me a game cartridge for the Commodore Max. Now, while I don't have a Max to play it in, in theory it should work on the Commodore 64. I think there's something else in the box. Um, this kind of looks like... surely not. I don't want to get my hopes up. This looks like an actual Commodore Max machine. I can see the Commodore logo through the packing material. Wow, uh, sure enough, I, I never thought I'd actually see one of these in person, much less own one. It's in pretty decent condition, too. I, there's no power supply included, but I should be able to use a regular C64 power supply. A few days later, I found out this package actually was donated by Todd from Maryland, but uh, he had it drop shipped from Japan, so that explains the mysterious label situation. Here's the serial number. I'm not sure how many of these were made. Alright, well, I'm sure you'll be seeing this again in a future video, so no need to spend a huge amount of time on it here. And a big thanks goes out to Todd for this amazing donation. Okay, let's have a look at this next box. This is from the Head Museum. How odd. Looks like they've included a note. Looks like they have sent me a wax head replica of a famous programmer. I'm almost afraid to look. Wow, that is really realistic looking. Unfortunately, I don't recognize the face at this point. April Fools! 
Next, I have a little box from Protovision. I wouldn't so much call this a donation as I did actually request this to be sent to me. But since Protovision sent it to me for free, I guess it counts as a donation, so I'll show it. Wow, that's uh, quite a few little Protovision advertisements. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is the main attraction here, Sam's Journey. Uh, it seems that this is the most celebrated Commodore 64 game in years, and I can't wait to try this out. Now, this is the North American release, so it works on NTSC machines and comes on floppy disk. I believe the European version comes on a cartridge. And look, it comes with a little treasure chest. And some kind of cards. And here's the floppy disk. No, two floppy disks. And it looks like both sides of the disks are used, so I guess that means there will be some disk swapping. There's a really interesting technical reason for the difference in this version versus the one for Europe, which I'll be getting into in the very next episode. So a big thanks to Protovision for sending me this. Alright, uh, next up I have a package from Chris Lazaga. I'm starting to get used to seeing his name show up on packages as it seems he sends me something every month. Not that I'm complaining as it's usually good stuff. Alright, uh, this is a cassette game for the Timex Sinclair, but I think this is for the later model that does color, which makes sense when looking at the screenshot on the back. Uh, weird, this was made by Scion in 1983. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at this. This is cool because I'm going to be covering this computer really soon, like in the next few months, and uh, this is the only piece of commercial software I have for it. Uh, thank you, Chris. Next up, I have a package from an anonymous sender. And by the way, when I say anonymous, I actually mean that the person specifically doesn't want their name shown. It's crazy how sometimes I get hateful comments from people saying, what a jerk I am for not even trying to find out who sent me something. So just to be clear on this, I know who sent it, and they don't want their name shown. Um, here's a little note. It says these are Amstrad disks. Interesting, I've never actually seen these before. I guess I have another bizarre floppy format to add to my little museum. Wow, these feel really thick compared to even 3.5 inch floppies. Another interesting thing is the actual media looks almost silver by comparison of traditional floppy disks. Well, I appreciate these, so thank you. Okay, here's a package with no sender's name on it. But on the side over here it says Gigatron TTL Microcomputer. <laughs> so I'll tell you what this is. Uh, I was contacted by the guy that makes these recently. Uh, at first I was thinking, not another homemade computer. And well, it is, sort of. But this one is very different from any that I've reviewed so far and any that I have planned to review. Uh, you see, this computer runs entirely from TTL logic chips and has no microprocessor, at least not in the traditional sense. It comes with a game controller as there are some video games in the uh, onboard ROM chip. And it appears to use the standard Atari style joystick connector. And uh, wow, I'm super impressed with this user's manual. Well, I decided not to open it up any further for now. I'll do an assembly and demonstration video soon enough for this as I'm bumping this to the top of the list of homebrew computers. So uh, stay tuned. Next up is a package addressed to the iBook guy. What the heck? Has this been lost in the mail for three years or something? <laughs> anyway, this appears to be from Christopher Murphy from Ireland. Well, let's see what it contains. It appears to be an NES cartridge, BART versus the Space Mutants. I did not have this one, uh, but uh, being it's from Europe, I wonder if it'll work on my NTSC Nintendo. Anyway, uh, thank you, Christopher. Moving along, I have a package from Computer Service Badger. <laughs> okay. Oh, look, it says allergy warning may contain packing peanuts. <laughs> well, fortunately, I'm not as annoyed by packing peanuts as at least one certain wood grain loving YouTuber is. And here they are. Might as well get this over with. Here's a note. Looks like this is from Endy. Okay, uh, let me clean up this mess right quick. Alright, let's see what we've got here. It appears to be a little thermal printer of some kind. I suspect it connects to whatever is in the other package here. And yep, it's another little pocket computer. I have several of these now and I intend to do a video at some point on them. Um, this is one I've not seen before. I thought I'd stick some batteries in it, however I realize this compartment is for ROM chips, not batteries. Apparently it has an internal rechargeable battery, which I'm sure is long since dead. But uh, yeah, it looks like the printer attaches neatly, like so. Well, uh, I'm sure I'll come back to this eventually, so stay tuned. Okay, and the last package of the month comes from Caleb Lovett. Whatever it is, it wasn't packed so great, so I hope it survived. Ah, Namco Museum for the Nintendo 64. Cool, I did not have this one, and it appears to be intact, so uh, thank you, Caleb. 
Okay, well, that about wraps it up. Um, this month was, again, an amazing month. I'm always amazed and humbled at the stuff that people send me. I did want to mention something about this Commodore Max. It's, a, it's an amazing donation, and I'm, I'm really happy to receive this. There's a sort sort of a cruel irony behind it, though, is that the, the video I really needed it for was the last Commodore History video I did. But, you know, because I want those videos to be kind of a, a documentary for, you know, future people to watch, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit that documentary and put this in there instead of the still photos that I had and maybe talk a little bit more about it. And so that video will be getting re-uploaded eventually and then shortly followed by the next uh, one of the documentary series. In fact, I've even thought about maybe merging them together so that the entire Commodore 64 episode, instead of being like two 25-minute episodes, it might be like one maybe hour-long episode or something like that. So anyway, the point is if you see me re-upload that video and you start scratching your head going, well, I thought I've already seen this one before. Well, that's the reason. It's because I wanted to add the content in for the Commodore Max uh, where, where it fits best. So anyway, uh, the other thing I, I wanted to do is give a big shout out to my friend Leo who uh, put his head in the box and uh, he had to spend a lot more time in the box than uh, our, we originally planned because he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> did I move? Yes, yes. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Uh, because it was very funny. I hope at least some of you found it amusing. So, um, so anyway, uh, but that's it for now. So uh, stick around for next time, and thanks for watching.